Welcome to this um, webinar, Love Yourself and Live Your Life Without Fear. For me, it's quite important topic and uh, I have been uh, pondering upon it a long time. It's uh, essential for our well-being, it is essential for our happiness and it is essential for our spiritual evolution to be able to love ourselves. Because we add godly parts integrated in the macrocosmic whole. And this um, macrocosmic whole is actually made out of love. And because it is made out of love, it means that I am, my essence is love, your essence is love, our essence is love, then why don't, why don't we feel it all the time? Why are we not able to love ourselves all the time? I think this question has uh, several levels and um, I will be very happy if um, you help me and also participate in this webinar, not just as uh, listening, but also talking, if you want to share, so that uh, it will be an interactive webinar <laughs> instead of a monologue. I, I am good at monologues, but it's not my favorite activity. I prefer uh, discussion, I prefer um, collaboration. So one level of this question, why we don't love ourselves all the time? I think it has a lot to do with how we spend our childhood. Because when we were born, we were really just a bundle of love. And we can remember, maybe not our infancy, but we can remember when we come into connection, when we come into contact with babies, we lit up spontaneously, we feel love for them, we, be happy, we become happy right away. Because babies, they are just love, they emanate love all the time. For them, there is just love, nothing else. But then we start growing up and slowly but uh, shortly, the education we receive in the family, life situations, I don't even want to get into what we are uh, taught in school, they affect us. And as kids we start um, building up defense mechanisms. And uh, if you are um, interested in that, there are uh, many aspects and many even books written about the emotional wounds that we need to deal with starting from childhood. And these emotional wounds make us that we construct a mask as a protection mechanism so that we can cope with life situations which seem for us to be in a specific manner. So there are five uh, different such typologies or um, defense mechanism or defense structures that or auric structures which um, ac actually color our entire uh, perspective upon reality. So this is uh, quite a big factor which plays a huge role in this um, <laughs> not so developed ability to love ourselves exactly as we are. And then also because of this mental programming that started in the childhood and then in the school and a lot in society with uh, not so healthy emotional patterns and not so healthy emotional habits and not so healthy mental patterns, we start perceiving ourselves as separate from the rest. And as long as we feel that we are separate from the rest, there will pop up in our consciousness different tendencies. We will, for example, consider the others as a threat or we will have the tendency to, f to look upon the others as a pleasure object or we will have the tendency to consider them as a competition and so on. So as long as we feel that we are separated from the others, 
we have a false perspective upon reality, we live in an illusion. And then for us, it will play quite a big role what the others have to say about you. And in this uh, manner, we, from, from a humoristic perspective, we give the remote control to the outer world that uh, the outer world will start deciding how, you, how we think, how we feel, how we look upon ourselves. And I can start with a banal example. Beauty and the standards of beauty. Along the time, the standard of beauty differ, um, different very much. In, uh, in the 1700s, a beautiful woman was a woman who was pale at the complexion and with round, voluptuous forms. That was the standard of beauty. If we look in the society today, the standard of beauty is almost the opposite. Uh, she has a tent. Um, many times a little bit exaggerated, she is skinny. So the society decides a standard of beauty and then we try desperately to fit in instead of uh, getting to know who we really are. So another level of the question why we don't love ourselves is because we don't know ourselves so well. We live with the mental image of ourselves which is created by the parents in the family and then in the school by teachers, by colleagues, by peers and by our friends, by the society. So we, we, don't, we don't know each other so well. And therefore we judge ourselves by the same measures that the society judges us and so on. So one practical aspect that we can do every single day is to spend some time with our self, not with our personality, definitely not with our mental structure, which uh, creates many times all kinds of troubles and problems, but with the self, with our divine godly essence. The more time we spend with the self, which is called Atman in the yoga tradition, the better we'll get to know ourselves and the more we will realize that we are extraordinary beings living for the moment an ordinary life. When we start coming into contact with the self, when we do, for example, meditation for revelation of the self or whatever other spiritual practice that uh, there is and that you know, which helps us with revealing the self, the more we will realize that we are not separated from the rest. We are one with everything else. So if I do something to hurt another one, I hurt myself. And if I do something which is harmful to myself, I hurt everybody else. So when we start not just thinking like that, because it can just be a mental speculation, but when we start feeling that we are connected to everyone else, we will pay much more attention how we treat ourselves and how we treat others. And then we will start loving more and more the self, our self. And we will also understand that we have a long history, not only from this life, but also from previous lives. We have a huge luggage with which influences us because our subconscious mind is active <laughs> all the time, no matter if we are aware of it or not. So we will start having, we will start practicing what I call self-compassion. We will understand. We have a long history. We went through a lot of aspects and situations. We didn't take all the time the wisest decisions. So we will understand that this is why we feel like we feel right now. And we will stop abusing ourselves. Many times we are so harsh to ourselves. We criticize ourselves. We are pessimistic. We don't appreciate ourselves. And I was thinking one of the days, looking because I'm still working on loving and accepting myself exactly as I am, 
I was paying attention to what happened inside of my consciousness, what I was feeling towards myself, and I was actually asking myself, would I treat my best friend this manner? Mm, definitely not. Why? Because I love her. That's why. So for me it was uh, an, an another um, impulse, another encouragement for myself to treat myself a little bit better than I do right now. And also we have quite a lot of expectations. We have expectations that we project upon other people, but we have also expectations that we project upon ourselves. And as long as we compare to other persons, other human beings, as long as we have very high expectations on us, it will make us unhappy and we will be our hardest criticist when it is uh, about what we do, how we are, how evolved we are. It can become like a race. Uh, another person is more evolved than me, another person meditated longer than me, and so on. I'm sure that uh, you can relate to this, maybe not in exactly in the same shape, but you can relate to that. And also another aspect that uh, hinders ourselves from loving ourselves is fear. All kind of fear in all kind of shapes. I can mention one which is uh, universal, the fear of death, which uh, even if now when I'm saying that you will think, no, 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 I'm not afraid of death, just wait until you are in a very critical situation and you somehow realize that you are about to lose your life, you will see that your body will react. Maybe not your consciousness, maybe not your spiritual heart, but your body will react definitely to that. So we have all kinds of fears that hinder ourselves from love, from loving ourselves. I have um, listened many people and read about many people who experienced uh, near-death experiences, who've been in near-death experiences. And they all, all, without exception, say the same. Those who, because they came back, this is why it was a near-death experience <laughs> and not a death experience. So when they came back, they all described more or less the same feeling they had over there, that they are loved exactly as they are. The mere fact that they exist is enough for them to be loved exactly as they are. And also the message they get is always the same love yourself and live your life without fear. We maybe don't think so much about our fears, but it will be an interesting um, topic of uh, self-introspection. Starting to realize what I am I afraid of? Because not all the time we pay attention or we are aware of our uh, fears. And when we start realizing which fears we have, we can laugh at it. it were, it's a healthy reaction, but we can also be very surprised because fear doesn't necessarily have to take a gigantic form. For example, you can be afraid of failure or you can be afraid that people don't like you or you can be afraid that um, you are not good enough or you can be afraid that uh, you will not succeed in a certain direction, or you can be afraid of, and so on. So when you look at them, they don't seem so big, right? But when you look at how often they pop up in us and control our life to a certain degree, they will get another dimension. And the more we are afraid of living and in enjoying life to the fullest, the more blockages we will create. The energies will not flow freely through us. They will influence our thinking. They will influence our perspective upon life. They will influence our self-esteem. They will influence our ability to love ourselves. And till the end, if these fears are constant, 
there in the background as a <laughs> nagging habit, they can even make us sick. Coming back to one of these near-death experiences that I've uh, read about, a woman who was in the terminal phase of cancer, she was uh, weighing, I think, 35 or 38 kilos, so really she was just bones and skin. Her organ started, her inner organ started to fail because she really didn't have so much life energy left in her. She had big tumors, big like lemons, from the neck down to the belly, and he entered, she entered a coma. So the doctors sent for her family and said she will not make the night. Uh, her condition is really critical, so come and say goodbye to her, even though she was, uh, as I mentioned, in a coma. So she had a near-death experience. I will make the story short. And there she met her father, who was deceased, and also some spiritual guides. And they asked her if she wants to stay or she wants to go back to her physical life in her physical body. And um, spontaneously she said, no, I want to stay here because I feel so good. I don't want to go back to that pain and that misery. But then both her father and the spiritual guides explained to her, if you would accept to go back, you have some gifts because you went through all this uh, misery and pain and suffering. So you can do a lot of good to, for others. And they showed her why she got cancelled. And the reason for her getting a cancer was not the diet. She was vegan, eating only ecological foods, good for the body. Perfect. She was practicing yoga, she was meditating, so she really had a healthy life. Maybe from certain points of view, healthier than any of us. Still, she was afraid. She was so afraid of disappointing others. She was afraid of not being enough. She was afraid that uh, the cell phones and the 5G and the uh, foods with the <laughs> E substances they can cause cancer. She was so afraid of it that she caused it till the end. And when I heard her story, for me, it was again another encouragement to pay attention to what fears do I have. And I've noticed that, wait a minute, I thought that I, I am more courageous than uh, I realized. But no, I have small fears. For example, right now, I am not afraid. But before starting the webinar, one thought that pop up, it popped up in my consciousness was what would they think of uh, my presentation? A little bit of fear there. So small fears like this, they impregnate our uh, energetical bodies and they affect us. And if I think like that, how much love do I have for myself? <laughs> well, I can love myself more. So we need, with easy means, to start loving ourselves more, to take care of ourselves as if we are, not as if, we, are, we should be our best friend. And in the same manner we treat our best friend, with love, consideration, kindness, compassion, patience, and so on and so forth, we need to treat ourselves the same. Because otherwise we are inflicting uh, self-abuse. We are abusing emotionally ourselves. Why? Why should we do that to, to us? It, it's nonsensical when we sit here in the comfort of our home, no critical situations around us. When you think of it, it is nonsensical. But then when you go out in the life and we encounter all kinds of situations, all kind of people and we get feedback in certain in different manners we will start again judging ourselves condemning ourselves being harsh to ourselves being critical being pessimistic so the best i discovered for myself that the easiest the most efficient way to accept myself more 
and to love myself more is the spiritual practice but also this self-awareness to understand that I am a divine godly being that I am created in the likeness of God so if I cannot love myself how can I love other people because we are in essence one and the same do I trick myself when I feel or think that I love somebody else more so it is um, it is a tricky aspect but it is an aspect that is worth spending time pondering upon it and then taking daily the decision to love yourself and accept yourself exactly as you are it doesn't mean that we indulge ourselves in negative tendencies or destructive behaviors or selfish uh, attitude it doesn't mean that it doesn't have so loving yourself loving your essence it doesn't mean loving your uh, flaws or indulging your flaws it means getting more and more in touch with who you really are this amazing being that has extraordinary powers and extraordinary qualities and ha has a specific unique role to play here we are here to make life better for others and we are here also to learn how to love truly i would love to hear your input on that and uh, if you have comments or if you have questions i would like to have a dialogue with you i think that uh, i would like to to ask something related to what you were describing before. Yes. It's a very beautiful perspective um, that uh, you was offering to us. I, I feel that uh, I didn't quite understand. I don't know if it's, it's really possible to understand or it's something that you need to feel really deeply within. This, uh, this, inner beauty and this uh, essence, this, um, this love that unites everything and everybody. Can you, can you expand I, on that? So as I see it, it is also a little bit a matter of uh, personality because some people are more um, sensitive and heart oriented so for them it's important to feel and the other people are more uh, mental more intellectual oriented and for them it's important also to understand nice. uh, either or so either you understand it deeply or you feel it it is uh, it is essential for us but even the mental persons will have eventually to feel it, to feel that love unites everything and love is our essence. And I'm wondering many times, imagine, I, I imagine my life, love, feeling this love all the time, because I know how it is. I have periods of time when I feel only love and it's intoxicating, it's ecstatic, but I still need to work on maintaining the state. It's absolutely wonderful. And in those moments when I really feel this true love, not, we, not what we were presenting in the, for example, mass media, it's caricature, what they present as being love. But when you really feel the true love, you understand, you feel, and understand, you feel. It's so natural. It's, it's really our natural state, being in that state of unconditional delicious ecstatic love it's our inner nature we are that so i don't know if i answer your question completely but it's a matter of typology if you are an intellectual person it is important for you also to understand but if you are an emotional person that for you it's important to feel you don't need so much to understand if you feel you are convinced of it Yes, you have uh, you have answered my question with uh, with uh, 
something very unexpected because it is true. Uh, I have a um, predominance of uh, mental activity. Uh, there is a there is a sensible side and there is a se um, sensi sensi sensitivity inside of me that uh, is uh, is active, but not in not in this area of love. Um, this is something that I find it quite scary, and I find it <laughs> that it's something uh, that I am very afraid of. And uh, I, I, I feel it doesn't need to be like that. It's just something that mm -hmm. I perceive and I think the, uh, wrongly in, in certain, if I can use this word wrong. But I have good news for you. <laughs> it's not you who are afraid of love. It's your ego. Ego gets annihilated the moment we love. Ego and love cannot coexist. The moment we love, the ego is out of through the door or the window or the roof. <laughs> so it's the ego who is afraid, which is afraid of love because love takes us directly to our essence. And our essence is the godly spirit. Our essence is not the ego. Ego is just a construct which was necessary when we were kids in order to put together our personality and individuality. But now when we are adults, we don't need it anymore. So it's the ego who is afraid. And as a, it just came to me and I will share with you, all living beings have an ego. And when I say beings, I refer including to angels. So even an angelic entities, they have an ego, but they use their free will not to use their ego. So for me, it was really a surprising insight to understand that even angelic entities have an ego, but they choose not to use it. And we know of two examples of angelic entities who choose to use their ego and think that they are somebody uh, as big as God. We know, but I will not say their name. So we can, we, we have free will and we can choose not to use our uh, ego. And when we love, ego is out of the door. So it's not you who are afraid of love, it's your ego, which senses that ah, I'm about to die. So in order to, in order to love, I need to let my ego out. Or you can simply love. And then the ego will get out. You don't, so instead of putting the focus on doing something to the ego, you can much better put your focus on love. And then love will do the rest for you. And it's much more pleasant, much more pleasant, and uplifting and uh, delicious and savorous and juicy. Instead of fighting the ego, we can just love. Something just uh, just came to me right now. For the past weeks, I have been trying to I have been trying to to let go and love. And uh, I realized that uh, I had a wrong understanding of what love is. And I was trying to look for love within myself somehow. And because I couldn't find it, I always thought that oh, I'm a bad person, I'm not loving, I can't find love, and there is no love inside of me. And then gradually it, it came to, to me as an inspiration that if there is a certain conditions in the consciousness and in the mind somehow, I'm not sure if it's correct, then love comes through me and just manifests. And I should not look for love inside of me. 
I should pay attention to what creates the conditions for the love to manifest somehow. How do you see this? I can uh, share one um, episode from my personal life. For uh, some time ago, I met somebody and I um, was feeling a lot of love for this man. And then we decided that when we would meet, I was uh, having a holiday by the Black Sea coast. And then we said at seven o'clock in the evening, we will meet. And my expectations, my expectations, so this um, longing, my longing was get, getting greater and greater. And it was 6.30. I was already palpitating and it was uh, 6.45 and I was already super excited and it was seven and he didn't arrive and then I realized the love that I felt to start with was unpersonal I was just feeling love but then I wanted to possess love and I wanted that if he said he comes seven o'clock at for me, punctuality is important. He has to be there seven o'clock. So seven o'clock was there. It was really a brilliant situation. This is why I'm sharing it with you. Because God gave me a lesson. Don't possess love. You lose it. Seven o'clock, he didn't come. But at my door, start knocking people, either by mistake or friends of mine who found out that I'm in that hotel, in that room, and they start coming. So in 15 minutes, they came and knocked at my door at least eight people. So after a while, I start laughing so much because the lesson for me, it was don't expect to get love through the one that you want. Love will come to you through the one that God wants. So stop trying to possess it because it will disappear. So, yes, the conditions the, that you mentioned is having the heart open and then the love will flow through it and we will feel love almost all the time. So the moment that I understood that, I promised myself I will never, ever do that mistake again, trying to possess love and trying to force God giving me love in the shape and form and conditions that I want. Because, uh, no, that's not freedom. That's not love. It's a really beautiful example. And somehow, miraculously, it's very much related to what I am experiencing. <laughs> yeah, so the conditions, uh, the condition is, if you can, we can call it like that, is just keeping the heart open. And... Uh, Having this um, innocence and candor of a kid who doesn't judge, doesn't have expectations, is just enjoying the present moment and feels happy unconditionally. Again, it's easy to speak about unconditional love sitting on a chair on a Tuesday evening <laughs> mm -hmm. until we get out into the, and meet life face to face. But uh, this is the condition, keeping the heart open. So from keeping these conditions uh, of the heart open and, uh, and loving uh, outside, when, when we just get out of the chair and uh, go into the real world, to loving ourselves in order to be able to have uh, to maintain good conditions inside of us when we go outside. Uh, what does it take for for us to to? Well, this is a bad news. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news is that the condition, the, so the requirement is practice, 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 practice. <laughs> it's by practicing it and reminding ourselves of it all the time that we maintain ourselves in that condition. Because I said it a little bit earlier, it's not the art is not to feel love and to love. The artist to maintain the state. 
so that you maintain the state by maintaining your focus upon it until you are able to have the focus on the love and in the same time keep a webinar, meet people, go to work, cook food, whatever else we need to do in our physical life. So practice repeatedly, practicing repeatedly until it becomes a second nature. Because, for example, saints or spiritual masters, they are in this state all the time. The question is, how much did they practice until they got it to that level? Mm -hmm. I see. Um, I find myself going out and meeting people. And um, I, I, I feel some kind of shame or some kind of um, um, negative thoughts about myself when I am around people. Maybe I, I, I make them more important than they are, or I look down on them when I consider that they are not uh, how they should be or how I, how I would like them to be. And uh, depending on that, my, my attitude changes very much. And I will feel very embarrassed when talking to someone. Um, I, I don't really feel that uh, I am a bad person or I am ugly, or I am stupid. But somehow, I really have a very weird attitude when I'm meeting people. How, how, how do you approach that? Well, let me start by telling that you are handsome. And from the discussion that we are having, you are also intelligent. The, the state that you describe is, again, the ego that uh, runs the show, got the remote control and compares the appearance of you with the appearance of other people or your personality with other people's personality. So one aspect that or practical recommendation, because this is a habit we, we spend many years on building up, comparing and judging. So one practical recommendation when you come upon yourself that you do that, bring up, uh, when you judge we are in the center of force, which is called Manipura Chakra under the navel, bring up your attention and consciousness from Manipura Chakra up into Anahata Chakra, your spiritual heart. And if you feel that it doesn't help that much and that quickly, bring it up to Sahasrara and do your best to see, to have the perspective from that level. And you will notice that it, uh, it's like an inner alchemy process. It will transform uh, your perspective and therefore also your thoughts and your feelings and your state. But again, the bad news, which is actually a very good news, practice. Practice. Yes, practice. Because we spend, I don't know how old you are, and I will not ask, and I will not tell you how old I am, but I spend all these biological years, uh, or many of them, by building up this uh, perspective upon life with judging, condemning, comparing, and so on. So now I have to spend uh, some time to get rid of that habit. And not by fighting it, but, but by building up the optimistical, enthusiastic, beneficial habit that uh, will keep me in love and happy. That is a practice. I practice being uh, judgmental. Now I have to practice being non-judgmental. It's a mystery how you keep your focus in Anahata or Shahajrara, and then in the same time, pay attention to what the other one is saying and have a conversation with them, especially if there is someone who is not so kind and warm-hearted like you are. It's uh, actually... It's easier. So when, when you are interacting with people from Anahata, it makes life much easier. And you will have 
compassion and understanding, especially for those who are uh, not in their best right now, because you'll understand a, a person who behaves disharmoniously, they suffer inside. They have some suffering because a happy person behaves in a very harmonious manner with kindness and with love and with generosity. So people who behave strangely, bizarre, disharmoniously, they suffer inside. And the suffering, they, they are not even aware of that, but is the suffering talking through them. So when you understand that, you will have compassion for them. And especially we can have compassion for them because we can remember, I've been there. I've done that. I've been like that. I've treated others in this manner that now he or she is uh, treating me. So I understand her. All the compassion. That's very beautiful. But I, I feel that before I can, I can feel like this towards other people, I need to accept that I am someone who is suffering and speaking through those suffering still to the others. And I need to work a bit with that. Yes. Compassion also towards ourselves, not only towards others. Yeah, in the moment that we uh, succeed in accepting ourselves exactly as we are and stop judging ourselves and we understand that we are on a journey or an adventure, depending on how you want to see it or take it, we understand when we understand that we will be much better at accepting ourselves as we I need to accept that I am someone who is suffering and speaking through those suffering still to the others. And I need to work a bit with that. Yes. Compassion also towards ourselves, not only towards others. Yeah, in the moment that we uh, succeed in accepting ourselves exactly as we are and stop judging ourselves and we understand that we are on a journey or an adventure, depending on how you want to see it or take it we understand when we understand that we will be much better at accepting ourselves as we are and the moment we accept ourselves as we are we become more free and more spontaneous thank you so much for taking your time to listen to me it was a super interesting discussion and i'm so happy that this topic brought alive this discussion thank you so much take care of you love yourself and live your life without fear